Hey everybody, today we're going to begin topic 13. This unit is all about measurement. You guys already know a lot about measurement from our work on the bell ringers this year. This unit will give you the opportunity to keep practicing converting between units of measurement. We're going to begin with customary units of length. The difference between customary units of length and metric units of length is that customary units of length, like the ones we use in the United States, inches, feet, and yards, are not based on units of 10, the way metric units are. So this can make them a little bit harder to remember sometimes when you're converting between one unit and another. However, remember that you are always allowed to use your fifth grade reference sheet, which I'm going to show you on the next page especially for those of you taking the ACAP. Remember that whenever you're answering a question about measurement, click on the reference sheet icon on your ACAP test and it will pull up the different conversion rates. I'm gonna show you how to use that in just a second. Okay, so here is a copy of the grade five reference sheet. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger just for a second for you. Move this out of the way. Okay, so this is the reference sheet that you'll have on the ACAP test. And notice that they have formulas for area and perimeter here. So that just means when they say formula, that's the system that you use to calculate the, the perimeter or area or volume of something. Down here they have the conversions. Now when they say conversion, they just mean changing from one unit of measurement to another. They have standard units on the left side. So those are what Envisions calls your customary units. And they have your metric units on the right side. So we're just focusing on customary or standard units for today. So to begin with, we're gonna be looking at converting between yards, feet, and inches. So I'm just gonna focus on that part of the reference sheet to begin with. Okay, so here we have the information telling us that in one foot, there are 12 inches. In one yard, there are three feet. And in one mile, there are 5,280 feet. We're gonna use that information to figure out how many yards, or no, how many inches, inches are in 12 yards. First, we need to figure out if we're going to multiply or divide. And for this, I always go back to a handy memory trick that I taught you guys a while ago. Do you guys remember? Um, horse to fly, multiply. Since yards are bigger than inches, here you get to see a beautiful drawing of a horse by Miss Slynn. That is wonderful, I know. Feel free to admire. Horse to fly, multiply. So that's a fly, obviously. If you can't tell that's a fly, then I don't know, clearly a fly. Anyway, horse to fly, multiply. So since yards are bigger than inches, we're going to multiply. We're gonna take our 12 yards and multiply that times 36 inches in a yard. Now you might be wondering, Ms. Lynn, how do you know that there are 36 inches in the yard, in a yard? So to show you that, I'm going to draw a quick model. Okay, so here I have a rectangle and the rectangle represents one yard. Now up here in my conversion chart, it tells me that there are three feet in a yard. So I'm gonna show that. Here's one, two, three feet in my yard. So this is one foot. This is another foot, and this is a third foot. Then it tells me that in each foot up here, there are 12 inches. So this is 12 inches, this is 12 inches, and this is 12 inches. So as you can see, in my one yard, I have 12 inches, 24 inches, 36 inches, 12 times three is 36. So that's why I'm multiplying times 36 here. Okay, now in order to multiply those, it's gonna be easier for me if I set it up like this, and then I can just do my US uh, standard algorithm for multiplying.
Okay, so when I'm done with that multiplication, I can see that in 12 yards, I have 432 inches. Now, if you wanted to see that visually, I could show you, well, here's one yard with 36 inches. Here's two yards with another 36 inches. And here's three yards with another 36 inches. And then I would just keep going and going and going until I had 12 yards all together. Let's see, so that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So now you can see all those yards, it makes sense that my number of inches is so large. And of course, what I'm doing here is not the most efficient way to solve the problem, but it is kind of a handy way to see why I end up with such a big number for my inches. That's what 12 yards looks like. Okay, so looking at number two, here we're asked to convert between feet and yards. Feet are smaller than yards. So that's a case of fly to horse, divide, of course. So I'm going to need to divide. I'm going to take my 30 feet and divide by the three feet here that are in each yard. 30 feet divided by three feet in each yard gives me 10 yards. Now, if you wanted to see what that would look like visually, make yourself an area model like the one I have here. I just drew a really big rectangle and then I divided it into 30 equal pieces. Each of these little pieces represents one foot. So here I've got 30 feet and I'm going to put these 30 feet into groups of three. Each group of three feet equals one yard, just like I showed you in my conversion chart. So this is one yard here. This is another yard here. This is a third yard. This is another group of three feet, so that's another yard. And then I would just keep going until I ran out of feet to put into groups. And when you count up each of these uh, color blocks here that's showing you one yard, you're gonna count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So that's your 10 yards right there. Okay, let's look at number four. Number four asks us to convert 75 feet to inches. So I'm gonna look on my chart here and I see that in one foot there are 12 inches. First, we need to ask ourselves if we're going to multiply or divide. Feet are larger than inches. Imagine like a classroom ruler. That's that long wooden rectangle that <laughs> your teacher uses to measure things. So on your classroom ruler, usually there's 12 inches shown. And it equals one foot. So of course we can see that one inch is smaller than one foot. Since feet are larger than inches, that's a case of horse to fly multiply. So we're gonna be multiplying here. We're gonna take our 75 feet and multiply it times 12 inches in a foot. In order to do this multiplication, come over to the side of your paper. Set up your number, your multiplication problem using the US algorithm, and then multiply. Add your two partial products, and Bob's your uncle. That tells us that in 75 feet, there are 900 inches. Okay, so number four is kind of an interesting one because here we're being given feet and inches and being asked to convert them to inches. So we're gonna start by focusing on our feet. We're converting 10 feet, seven inches to some number of inches. Looking at my conversion chart, I know 
that there are 12 inches in a foot. Ask yourself if we need to be multiplying or dividing for this conversion. Feet are larger than inches. So this is a case of horse to fly, multiply. I'm gonna multiply my 10 feet times 12 inches in a foot. And this is easy to do in my head. To multiply something times a multiple of 10, I just need to multiply my non-zero digits. So one times 12 is 12, and then add my zero. So that gives me 120 inches. And then I just need to add my remaining seven inches. 120 plus seven gives me 127 inches. Okay, so now we've gone over questions one through four, and I'm gonna let you work on questions five, six, seven, eight, and nine on your own. Notice that in questions seven, eight, and nine, you're being asked to compare the two amounts by writing greater than equal to or less than. Make sure that you pay attention to the meaning of each of these symbols. A really great, great way to remember greater than and less than is just to remind yourself that the opening on the greater than symbol will point towards the bigger number. So of course we know that five is greater than one. Or if we wanted to use the less than symbol, we would still point the opening towards the greater number. So two is less than five. In order to compare these amounts, you're going to have to convert them. So you're gonna to have to convert 64 inches to feet in order to compare to five feet. Or you could go the other way around, compare feet to inches and then compare them. Okay, let's look at the last few questions. This tells us that the Statue of Liberty was a gift to the United States from the people of France. And some of the dimensions of the statue are shown here. Quick reminder that when we see the word dimensions, we're talking about length, width, or height. Okay, so question 10 asks us to figure out the height in inches from the base of the statue to the torch. So looking up at my table, I can see that in feet, the height from the base of the statue to the torch is 151 feet and one inch. So I'm going to take 151 feet and one inch and convert them to inches. In order to do this, I need to convert feet to inches. So that's horse to fly. Feet are bigger than inches. So I'm going to multiply, horse to fly, multiply. 151 feet times 12 inches in a foot. That's what I need to solve. Now this is the type of problem that we've been practicing in our fluency assessments lately. So this is a good opportunity for you to practice it. Pause this video and solve it and then compare your work with what I show you in the video. We're going to begin by multiplying our ones. So I can do two times one, which is two, two times five, which is 10. Put down your ones and carry your tens. And last, two times one plus one more, which gives me three. Now I'm done with my ones place, so I can cross those out. I need to remember to put a zero as a placeholder and then multiply my tens. So I'm gonna multiply one times one, which is one, one times five, and one times one again. And then last, just add my partial products. And that gives me 1,812 inches plus the one inch that I had from the beginning for a total of 1,813 inches. Okay, next I'm asked to convert the thickness of the statue's right arm <clears throat> which is shown here from feet to yards. So I have to convert from feet to yards. Okay, 
So the thickness of her right arm is 12 feet wide. Wow, that's serious. And I have to convert that to yards. Feet are smaller than yards. So that's fly to horse divide, of course. 12 feet divided by three foot in a yard gives me four yards. That was easy, easy to do. All right, I'm gonna let you work on 12 and 13 on your own. Keep in mind that for question 13, you're going to have to write a complete sentence that justifies your thinking using math vocabulary. Let me know if you have any questions about this assignment.